So if I just go back to the top of the page here, um, yeah, beyond Linux from scratch, it just goes for, to the Linux from scratch.org um, website, click on either up here or to the left. Um, if I go back home, uh, yeah, you can either click this link here, as you see I've done, or, or click up here, either, either will do. And then go to read online. You can download, download various different copies or different formats of the BLFS book to read offline. Um, and then this link will take you to the book for the current stable. There is a system D version if you've built the system D version of Linux from scratch, which I haven't. I always go with the, the default. I don't know for any time they all swap these and make the system D one the top one or um, if they'll only drop the the one they've always built the system V version um, once that becomes out of date if it ever does I don't know or if uh, um, I guess this will the system V version will always remain the state the first stable version because it's fewer packages to install than system D there's more packages with system D on Linux from scratch, so it could be it, it never changes uh, for the foreseeable future. So I'll, I'll always be building a stable unless I decide, oh, it's time for me to do a system D one. I have done one once um, a few years ago, so maybe it is time for me to do that again in the future. Um, now, BLFS Arata, um, there is one that we will have to take note of. We will be building Shadow again. Um, so I've got to try and remember this is important because um, as you can see there it says when compiling shadow changes are made to the in make file in prior to running auto reconf which means that the changes made to the make file get lost after it auto reconf runs because it recreates the make file in so that's quite important I don't know what effects it will have whether it will break something or shadow won't compile um, so that's quite important. Um, this is not as important as just saying that the URL's not accessible anymore. So I don't know if SoundTouch will get in, will be installed, but if it is, then hopefully I'll remember it and just come and read us. Tells you what to do, or we'll be able to find it anyway. Um, if I go back, got security advisories now. We're doing. LFS 11.0, so it's basically any advisors from LFS 11.0 up to the present date. They're tracking on these this link here, so you can see there's quite a few there. Um, I would say that if you're building Beyond Linux from scratch purely for the educational point, which is probably what most people would be doing, I wouldn't really be too bothered about these updates because by its very nature you're installing it from for an educational point of view you probably don't intend using BLFS beyond that if you do intend to use BLFS for a system that you're going to be using day to day um, I would thoroughly recommend reading this page and acting upon each uh, bit of uh, advice here for security um, some of these are critical as you can see um, Firefox one here about memory safety bugs. Um, there is one here. It even says that it's been reported in the wild that the, 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 the exploit is being um, uh, exploited in the wild. I can't actually see that anywhere now. Um, so yeah, it's like I say, if you are are going to use BLFS in anger for a machine that you're going to be keeping to use for the future then um, keep a copy of this page up or make notes if you printed out the manual for example or the index keep notes um, to remind you to come back to see what the advice is and I guess generally it's going to be 
update to a newer version and the instructions will probably be the instructions from the development version which is the current um, version that's uh, being maintained for the next uh, release so you can see there's this current development version here which as you can see it's currently 11.0-121 um, so it's the same layout it's obviously just um, the packages that have been updated so as I say I won't be paying too much attention to that because for me this is just a demonstration um, I'm guessing for most of my viewers it will be uh, just installing Beyond Linux from scratch for the educational point uh, but just to reiterate if it's not then follow that through so let's go into the book and what I should do first of all is I'll just go through um, some of the uh, introduction there's some things here just for tweaking beyond Linux from scratch there's some information here uh, there's some information about uh, like some uh, I guess you could call it like final configuration for LFS they call it after LFS configuration issues it's just a bit more configuration just to make the system ready for beyond Linux from scratch um, and then once I've done that Uh, yeah, I've just realised I can't copy and paste stuff. It depends on how much there is. I think there are some scripts that do need to be copy and pasted in here. So, um, I think what I'll do is go so far, then get the uh, text browser up, wget going, and gpm going, and then then carry on with these sections so that I'm able to copy and paste the um, configuration files and so on. For example, if I'm um, going to this one here, there's a bit here about um, creating a, an issue file. Well, that one's not copy and paste, actually. Uh, let's see if we can find one. Bash startup files. Yeah, this is a whole page of stuff that you can see there's one big um, configuration there for profile. So and then there's more to do with profile for bash completion these are all related so once you've updated that profile these um, are all associated with that profile config scripts you can't really do one and not the other so I think that's probably the best thing to do um, one thing if you think I'm hesitating the reason is I've not gone through this beyond Linux from scratch at all um, on a test run I've looked through it I've examined it, had a quick look through to see what needs to be done, see if there's anything glaringly different from the last time I've, I um, ran Beyond Linux from scratch. There isn't. The, the only one thing that I have noticed is that um, there's a lot more security issues than there ever was. Um, there's two Firefox versions in the, in the book. Um, one's because the newer versions of Firefox don't support FTP links anymore um, so that's why that's in there there's security issues surrounding I think is it WebKit QT WebKit something like that um, so that's the one thing I have noticed there's a lot more warnings about security issues oh and also another thing I've noticed is that Python 2.7 is still in the book whereas um, most other if not all well I couldn't say all actually most other distributions have got rid of Python 2.7 unfortunately Linux beyond Linux and Scratch has still got Python 2.7 which is a bad thing because it hasn't been updated or sorry it hasn't been supported since January 2020 it's nearly two years now now I can understand LFS you know they've obviously got limited resources probably only a handful of people who are editing the book and testing and so on it's probably a lot more difficult for them to be able to factor that out to um, either create patches uh, to 
not need Python 2.7 or to update um, other packages to 3, uh, Python 3 and so on. So it's, a, it's another thing to bear in mind. You know, if you are concerned about security, the fact that um, so there are some packages and they may be packages that are essential to get a system working. I don't know that yet. Um, or there may be packages that you can avoid and use other packages that don't rely on 2.7. Uh, so although it is an out-of-date package, uh, I don't know if there are maybe third-party um, fixes being uh, applied to Python 2.7. But I will be installing it just to show packages being installed. As I say, I, I'm not particularly worried about security so much because I am only doing demonstration. But if security is an issue with you, then that is something else to bear in mind. But yes, as I was saying, I haven't tested this. Um, so as I go through, if I do come across problems, yeah, I could be hesitating about things, making decisions on the fly. Um, I'm bound to come across problems because... Um, in the past I've found Beyond Linux from scratch because of its very nature it's not a, a recipe you follow from beginning to end you just pick bits that you want um, sometimes the instructions aren't accurate or they're out of date you know there's, there's always tiny little things or it could be that um, I've misinterpreted something that's something that can happen uh, misread things another problem that might crop up is as with Linux from scratch LFS 11.0 I'm going to be turning on the C flags and CXX flags so that could introduce build problems I will be doing the tests where available um, but using the C flags could produce problems so it could mean that if something fails and I suspect it's the C flags that I'll be either partially disabling them or completely disabling them and to rebuild a package to get it to build correctly um, but I'm hoping that doesn't cause too many problems but it certainly could mean that some packages are rebuilt without those settings I'm just hoping that using C flags and CXX flags can eke a little bit more performance out of this machine um, being it's not the most up to date um, so yeah so if I go through and seems like a sort of bit unsure what I'm doing it is because I've not prepared I haven't got any notes to work from I normally make some notes when I prepare videos um, but I've got nothing so this will be blind be flying by the seat of my pants um, and hopefully it'll be a good way for you to see how maybe I can how I go around solving some of the problems um, as I go through this